Praise the Lord, church. We can stand all over the house and give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. How many people is glad to be in the house of the Lord? Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Where are you at? If you'll just lift your hands. Lord, we come to you today, God. Lord, you know every need, every situation, God. Lord, nothing is too big or too small for you, God. You handle the small things just as much as you will handle the big things, God. Hallelujah. Lord, anoint pastor today, God, as he teaches or preaches in his first service. Lord, anoint our minds to understand it, God, and our hearts to receive it, Jesus. Lord, if we can give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship with Sister Haley as she sings. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind. thankful for the love of God. Hallelujah. 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 If you would you can remain standing. Go to the Lord in prayer. Or go to the word of the Lord, rather. Hallelujah. Uh, we miss Sister Mills. Uh, she is sick in the bed. Pray for her. She's uh, having multiple issues uh, today. High blood pressure, uh, bad headaches, and then you may have See where she had posted earlier this week. She had to go get some uh, spots taken off of her, uh, and they're 98% sure that it's skin cancer, uh, but they feel like it would definitely be something that could be taken care of, no problem. But one of the things that they, she had like a little skin tab that was on her eye, and they took that off, and now her eye is completely swelled shut. 
and everything, and so she's uh, in the bed, uh, and, and so let's pray for her during this time. Uh, feel very, uh, bear with us, uh, if, you, if you're hot right now, we, we just had a five ton to go down, uh, so I've got uh, Brother Martin, we think it's just a capacitor, he's uh, working on getting that switched out, but he had to, he said, how bad do you want air in here? Uh, and uh, I said, well, I want it real bad. And he said, well, I'm supposed to leave service, but that capacitor's at home. I said, you go home. Anybody leave service. We need air. Hallelujah. And But uh, so I, pr I pr yes, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. But I, I so bear with us in that, uh, but uh, it's these other three are trying to keep up. I feel very, uh, very, what I plan to teach this uh, first uh, service on this Sunday, next Sunday, and then the last Sunday of the month. I got Brother Sage on that third Sunday. We missed them today. They're on vacation. But I feel very important about teaching this. I taught this in back in 2014, 15 range. Um, and it's basically going to be about outreach and so winning. We got a revival that's getting ready to come up. It's been prophesied and prophesied by multiple preachers again this past Tuesday night that a harvest is getting ready to come. The Bible talks about that the fields are white, but the laborers are few. So if you think this preacher is going to bring the visitors with him, I evangelize for it. it ain't the way it works. So we got to do our part. Uh, of, of, of that. And I'm telling you, there has never been a time that God has been drawing than what he has in the last couple of weeks. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Hallelujah. But we're going to start off with Acts 8 and 26. The Bible said, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south and to the way that goeth down from Jerusalem and to Gaza, which is, which is desert. And he arose and he went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Cadus, uh, queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet then the spirit said unto Philip it's very important to listen to the spirit go near and join thyself to this chariot and Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandeth thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I unless some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and that he would sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shears. So open he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? If this Isaiah talking about himself, or is he speaking of another man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and he began at the same scripture, and he preached unto him Jesus. And they went on their way, and they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believest that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up, out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. One more verse of Scripture, Acts 2 and 46. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such should be saved. I want to teach today to you on this subject. 
the importance of being sensitive in so winning. The importance of being sensitive in so winning. You can be seated. In the book of Acts, we, find, we get to witness three remarkable conversions. In chapter 8, we have the conversion of an Ethiopian, a black man who is a representative of the racial family of Ham, one of the three sons of Noah. In chapter 9, we have the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, a Jew that was a representative of the racial family of Shem, another son of Noah. In chapter 10, we have the conversion of Cornelius, a Roman centurion who is a representation of the racial family of Japheth, the third son of Noah. The three great racial families are now made one in the family of God. The curse of Babel, which enforced God's deliberate division of mankind, is reversed in the church. The Ethiopians here may possibly have come from the area of Africa that we now call Sudan, a area that is adjoining the modern country of Ethiopia. Christianity came to Ethiopia at a very early date and time, and who knows, it possibly was introduced into this country by this eunuch. But the Ethiopian in this story here, he is a eunuch, and in the East, eunuchs often attain positions of great power and trust. This man held a high office in the native land. He was, in effect, the secretary of the treasurer for that country. He seems to have been a Gentile, God-fearing man. And as a eunuch, he was not likely to have been a full convert of the Jewish religion because of the restrictions of the Mosaic law. However, contact with Judaism had convinced him that truth concerning God was to be found only among the Hebrew people and God would draw him as a magnet would draw a needle. I can only imagine with what eager anticipation that he planned for his journey to the holy city. There he will learn the truth. There he will be among God's people. He can visit the temple. He can make his offerings. He can walk into the court of the Gentiles. He he could converse with the rabbis. He could talk to the priests and the Levites. His position, his authority would give him special access to members of the Sanhedrin even to Ananias and Capaeus, the high priest. Just as Naaman's contact would open doors for him in the very presence of Israel's king. One can only imagine with what high hopes that this unit had when he set off on this expedition. As he came all the way up the Nile River, across the sands of the Sinai Desert, all into the hill country of Judea. But at Last, uh, he seen those mighty walls uh, of Jerusalem uh, as they broke into his sight. Uh, he would see the temple uh, in all of its golden splendor, uh, bathed in the fire of the setting sun, uh, like some burning beacon on Mount Moriah. But oh, what bitter disappointment. How bitterly disappointed this eunuch must have been when he seen the materialism, the hypocrisy, the intolerance, the squabbles, and above all, the deadness of Judaism. We do not know. All we know is he come up to Jerusalem to worship, and now he's returning home. Jerusalem has left him disappointed, but in his search, it seems that his search was not over. The Bible says in Acts 8 and 28 that he was returning. He was sitting in his chariot. And he read Isaiah the prophet. Had he bought a copy of the Old Testament book of Isaiah while in Jerusalem? He could, if he had, he had not, could not have made a wiser purchase. If he was going to find out about truth, about Christ, anywhere in that Hebrew Bible, it would be in the writings of Isaiah, the great prophet of God. He had not found what he wanted in Judaism. 
Maybe he'll find it in the scripture. So he begins reading the Bible diligently, plowing his way through, longing for some phase, some key that would unlock the very truth to his hungry heart. The Bible said in the 29th verse, then the Spirit said unto Philip, go near, hallelujah, go near. Philip, you need to leave what you're doing. You're in a mighty revival in Samaria. You're seeing God do mighty things, but I'm gonna send you out in the middle of the nowhere into the middle of a desert because there's a man out there that is seeking me. There's a man out there that's hungry. I'm gonna tell when God starts speaking that's the time you need to be sensitive to whatever God is wanting to speak into your life for someone else go near the old saying is if you don't win souls you got to get your hands dirty you, you, you better put you need to remember how you used to be such were some of you but you've been washed. But Brother Mills, I was raised in church all my life. You were still on your way to hell. And furthermore, what could you have been if it had not been for God's grace and God's mercy? So I'm telling you, you got to go near to their situation. You got to get to where their pain is. You got to get to what they're going through. You got to feel their heartbeat. You got to get a burden for them. Hallelujah. Go near. You got to join thyself. I'm telling you right now, if you want to see your lost family say, you need to join yourself to them. If you want to see your co worker say, you need to join yourself to them. Join thyself to this chariot, to where he's at. You cannot, if you think God's going to fill this church by us just sitting here in four walls and not taking it out of the wall, you're missing the boat. There's a reason he said, go out into the highways and the hedge. He didn't say go to the temple. He said, go out into the highway and the hedge and compel them to come. Hallelujah. Philip had no doubt he was to minister to this wayfaring man whose chariot was thundering towards him. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I do not want to get on judgment day. And there's people that I come in contact with on a daily and weekly basis. And they tell me, you mean you had the Holy Ghost? You had the plan of salvation and you never invited me to church? You never talked to me about God? You knew I was on my way to hell and you done nothing to stop. You done nothing. You knew the bridge was out. You was like, I was like a person going down the road and you knew the bridge was out and you never said nothing. Because you were satisfied that you was going to be saved. I'm telling you, if you'll be sensitive, I'm going to give you a story here in just a minute of how three individuals from this church in the last three weeks were sensitive and you didn't even know you were sensitive. And that individual is going to be here in this service, if not the first, in the second service today. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost, God is starting to do a drawing. I said it Tuesday night. I realize we've been inviting people and inviting people and they have not come. But friend, you can invite them all you want to. But unless God is drawing them, it ain't going to do any good. But I'm here to tell you in the Holy Ghost right now. God is drawing right now more than he's ever drawn since I've ever been the pastor of this church. God is speaking. I'm not having to look for anybody to invite. They're literally coming to me. Ordinary people did not travel in such style, this chariot. Philip could have well felt a rejection. However, he was so sensitive to the Holy Ghost that he had no doubt that here's a soul whose heart is ready to hear of the Lord. Go near! Join thyself to that chariot. The Holy Ghost, after all, is the Lord of the harvest. It's a great thing to be so in touch with heaven that our witness and our attempts at so winning are directed by the Lord. And Philip ran thither to him. There's an urgency that needs to be in our spirit. He ran. He, he couldn't get there quick enough. I can't miss this moment. 
the compulsion of the Holy Ghost was unmistakable. It was not that he just might miss the traveler, but he might miss the text. The Holy Ghost knew just how far the eunuch had read in his reading of the prophet Isaiah. He knew that he had come to chapter 53. He knew just how far down that strategic chapter that he had progressed. He knew just what so searching questions were welled up in that Ethiopian's heart. Run, Philip, run. There are times when the king's business calls for haste. This particular incident illustrates the magnificent timing of God. The Bible says in the 30th verse, and Philip ran thither to them, and he heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? He's literally reaching out for help. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip had asked. And at once, this educated, this culture man confessed his situation. He had no trouble understanding the manuscript. He had no, tr uh, he had no trouble under being able to read, but he had considerable understanding the message that was in there. Revelation had not come. Place of the scripture in the 32nd verse, which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shears, so open, not his mouth. What greater gospel text? What greater opening for Philip? I, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself. But I'm telling you, if you got lost family members, when's the last time you invited them to church? Do you not realize they're on their way to hell? We live like they're not. Why are we even living for God? Well, Brother Mills, I want to be saved. Then why ain't you compelling your family and friends to come? Do you not want them to be saved? Do you want, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Do you want your children to burn in a lake of fire? Do you want your unsaved spouse to, no, Brother Mills, I don't. Then I'm telling you right now, you need to start compelling them. You need to start, hallelujah, we got to live. Somebody says, I, I want to live like I'm dying. I want to live like I'm going to heaven, but the only way I'm going to live that way is I've got to reach somebody else. i got to reach somebody else. If living for God, if you're not excited right now about living for God, you will never make it to heaven because this is only a tip of what's going to happen in heaven. Oh, Hallelujah. Burden today. Burden today. Here was a genuine seeking sinner read, reading in the scripture all about the Savior. He had come to the great passage in Isaiah that described Christ on the cross. And he had asked the question that enabled Philip to lead him by the hand to Calvary and introduced him to Jesus. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Like a lamb dumb before his shears so open, he not his mouth. The text tells of the Messiah being silent before his shears. We can see Jesus being abused by the Sanhedrin Ridiculed by Herod, scourged by Pilate, scoffed at by the soldiers. We see him stripped, seemingly as helpless in their hands as a sheep in the hands of its sure. All of his dignity that comes from being dressed is stripped away, but his silence clothed him with a dignity that no insult or injury a man could ever take away. How Philip must have seized upon the silence of Jesus. You see, off in the glory, I could see Philip talking. There were 12 legions of angels straining over the balconies of heaven with drawn swords waiting for a word. 
One word, and they would have burst upon this planet to turn the blood to water the seven seas and ushered in Armageddon then and there. But that word never came. The Bible tells us he was silent before his shears. And his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. I can see as all these statements greatly perplex the eunuch. He gathered clearly enough from the text that the violent death of someone was being described here. But who is he talking about? The problem was that he did not have the key to unlock the door and enter into all truth. So you've got to understand something. There's a lot of people that are hungry out there. But they need a key. They need a key. They don't have the key, but who's got the key? You've got the key. You've got the same message that Peter had. Saint of God, you've got the key. You got, if you know that you've got to be born to get into the water, you've got the key. But Brother Miss, I don't know how to explain it. And that just, that just I, I can't understand that. Some of us have been raised in church, been in church 20 and 30 and 40 years, and we can't explain, we can't explain how to be saved. We can't, we cannot, I don't understand. How do you know that you're even saved? How do you know that you're even saved? If you can't explain it. Dave Ramsey says, I'm never going to invest my money with anybody, an investment broker, if I can't understand what they're investing it in and explain it for myself. Because how do I know they're doing what they're doing for my benefit? But we come to church and teach it. Teaching is born to us. And we talk during church. I'm trying to be nice today. And, and, we, and we text on our phone during church. And, and, we, and we go through social media. You say, well, if I'm hitting you, well, that's just the Holy Ghost because I ain't got nobody in mind right now. And, and we do all these kind of, while people are on their way to hell and then we will wonder why our lives are in a mess all the time. As anointed as I need to be in that pulpit, it may I don't need to be any more anointed than the ears of the hearers. The word of God won't return void. You need to finish that verse out. It said when they went out with joy, it did not return void. We got souls that we're passing up every day on the job. We're, 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 we're seeing them at school every day. I realize, I've used Brother McDaniels as an example. I realize Napa did not hire you to do those type of things and, and seeing somebody say, you can't set up shop and, and just say that I, I, I'm going to do that. But I'm telling you, when God opens a sliver of a door, you've got to be sensitive enough to, to say, this is God, this is God. It's a God moment. I walked into that touch of heaven earlier this week. I believe it was earlier this week. And I got two tables that are right there behind the prep tables or whatever. And one of them had been pushed all the way up against the sink. I was like, what? what's going on here? And I look. It's this court that got a chair over there. And she's got Bible study spread out all over that, that table. She's got pen and paper. You know what she's doing? She's getting ready. She's getting ready to be a person that's getting ready to walk through that door. They're hungry. It's not about teas. It's not about a paycheck. It's souls on their way to hell. The old, pro, the old preacher said, I don't go. I don't go to Walmart so that I might get to invite somebody to church while I get my groceries. But I go to Walmart to invite somebody to church and while I'm there, I'll get some groceries. What's your mission? What's your burden? What's your burden? What a leading question here. When he said in the 34th verse, the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom 
speaking the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? What a leading question. It's like a softball question that a lot of times they give these politicians. Very, very easy. It's only, it's like Nicodemus when he said, uh, how, how, how's a man don't be born again when he's old? Oh, man. I know Jesus is God in flesh, but he's been turning cartwheels with me. All right? It's like the Philippian jailer asking Paul, and Sinai, well, what must I do to be saved? And if you're not sensitive enough, you're going to miss the moment. The, the, the moment is not, well, let me put you in contact with my pastor. Sheep beget sheep, not shepherd beget sheep. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a sheep before I'm a, I'm a shepherd. But I'm here to tell you, we're all in this thing together. Such, it, it's no different than when they asked Peter on the day of Pentecost, men and brethren, what shall we do? Such leading questions should be certain evidence that the Holy Ghost is at work. And that God has brought this individual to a, the point of salvation. And the Bible says in the 35th verse, Then Philip opened his mouth and he began at the same scripture and he preached to him Jesus. Especially the ministers in this church, you should be able to open that Bible and be able to preach from that scripture. Any scripture. I like what I heard Brother Mark Morgan say here a while back. He said, just put... He, didn't, he couldn't remember what scripture it was. He said, just put any of them over. I, I can preach for him any of them. That, that word is always going to have something in there for him. Philip was delighted to, to relate the great Isaiah passage to the Christ of Calvary. Why, sir, the prophet speaks of another man. And what a man he was. He is the man Christ Jesus. He is the promised Messiah of the Jewish people. Born, as Isaiah said, of a virgin. He came, as Isaiah said, and the child was born and the son was given. He was the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, and upon whose shoulders the government is yet to be said. This is the one who was taken from prison and from judgment. Who was led as a sheep to the slaughter and Philip would retrace the tragedy of Calvary and he would speak of the resurrection and the ascension. Brother Mills, I, I'm just afraid that I won't know how to, I can't explain it good in detail to him. Don't you understand that there's people that have no idea about what that Bible's about. You don't have to be, have a PhD in it. The simpler the better. In fact, your greatest testimony is your testimony of what God done. Nobody can tell it like you can tell it, what God done for you. And if it's been a long time since you've told your testimony, then maybe you're not grateful huh? or you forgot where he brought you from. The Ethiopian, I can see, I, let me back up, I can see as Philip began to tell him about the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost, on the birthday of the church, of the great commission to go into all the world to preach the gospel, baptizing believers in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said in the 36th verse, and they went on their way and they came into a certain water. Now get this, a certain water. They're in a desert. They're in a desert. If God wants to move, it don't matter what obstacles are there. But Brother Mills, if we would ever get past saying this is why God can't do it and start believing that if God says it, it can happen, God will make water in the middle of the desert. And they came to certain water. Hallelujah. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. He didn't have to ask him to be baptized. He told him about baptism and then he simply said, what doth hinder me from being baptized? The Ethiopian had found in Jesus what he had not found in Jerusalem. At last, his search was over. All of his life had been a preparation for this moment. 
You see, his education enabled him to read. His scholarly ability enabled him to read the language of the Bible. His high position made it possible for him to travel to Jerusalem. His wealth made it possible for him to buy a scroll from the book of Isaiah. His interest in Judaism drew him from afar to the city where Christ was crucified. His deep disappointment in Judaism, the great hunger of his heart, all prepared him. Nothing was wasted. All that God allows to come into our lives and individuals' lives is significant. From the cradle to the grave, the goodness of God is at work in our lives to lead us to repentance. And we got hungry souls that are out there. And the first thing we want to say is, they don't have truth, so I'm not even talking to them. It don't even make sense. I don't want to get mixed up with the Trinitarian. If you ain't got rooted enough in this word, then something's wrong. But the Bible said that the Holy Ghost would lead and guide into all truth, which lets me know he gives them the Holy Ghost and they don't have the truth. Now, whether they are led or not, is up to them. He's not going to drive them. He's going to lead them. And they come to a point where they have to decide, am I going to follow after God? Am I going to follow after him? Because if he'll give them the Holy Ghost, he's not going to leave them there. I said, make lo 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 my Sunday. But we go around, and a lot of times we're, we're like the Pharisees, and we're looking over there at those Gentiles, and we're looking over there at those pagans, and we're looking over there. They don't have anything at all. I'm here to tell you right now, I'm thankful for the day of every individual that came from different backgrounds. Maybe they come from the drug world. Maybe they come from the denominal world. I'm thankful that a sister Christian Hallelujah, that came from the Baptist world. There was a hunger in her heart. There was a desire in her heart. Hallelujah. So faith is exercised. And pointing to the water, the eunuch asked for baptism. Philip said, if thou believest without thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ he is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down to the water both Philip and the eunuch and he baptized him and when they were come up out of the water the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing I could see now still dripping wet the old eunuch turns and he'd say something to Philip and he's gone he had vanished the text tells us that the spirit of the Lord caught him away or snatched him away as some render it one moment he's there, the next moment he's gone. The unit must have been stunned. He saw him no more. The sudden disappearance of Philip must have left an amazing impression upon the unit's mind, already convinced that he had heard and believed the truth. This mysterious vanishing of the messenger was surely underlined the touch that his soul had received by the supernatural. I want to talk to you about for a little bit and close it on the importance of one soul. The day of Pentecost was the harvest of Jesus Christ. 3,000 one day, 5,000 the next day. But the outpouring shifted to the work of the disciples. And the scripture records that they continued daily. And then it's, they were in one accord in the temple. So that means when we come here, we need to be in unified. We need to be in unity. It ain't all about what God can do for you. It's what he wants to do for somebody else. <laughs> Understand, the church is a hospital. It's not a spa club where you can come and you be massaged to make you feel better. But friend, you need to shake yourself and realize there's a world that's on their way to hell. When the outpouring shifted, it began. They continued daily, breaking bread from house to house. House to house. It's what some of the small groups is about here. Fellowship. New ones coming in. 
I've got somebody, one of my new, and I'll, I'll talk about it here in just a minute, getting ready to join our Taco Tuesday group. It's one of my customers. Spirituality is not something which we clothe ourselves with on just Wednesdays and Sundays. Notice what the Holy Ghost links together. They continue daily with one accord in the temple. It links the temple, breaking bread from house to house, and the table. The temple and the table. Those that were in love with the Lord found their way to a place of prayer. The temple court was a very convenient place to meet for worship and for fellowship. The spiritual person will seek out a gathering place of God's people. That spirituality will then spill over into the everyday aspects of life and it will bring people together in hospitality. It is the very commonplace things of life such as eating, drinking, and activities. The Bible said praising God, having favor with all the people. There wasn't no complaining. There wasn't no criticizing. There wasn't no envy. There wasn't no strife. But the fruit of the Spirit was evident everywhere. We preach a lot. We practice a lot. I pray every day for it. Almost every day for it. That I want to be used in the gifts of the Spirit like never before. I believe that's a sign of a revival church. And that's a sign of an end time church. But let me tell you what's more important than the gifts of the Spirit. That is the fruit of the Spirit. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 22 through 23. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. What an attractive company of people that it was. A company of people that were praising God. And the Bible said, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. We talk about that. If God don't add them, ain't nothing we do. And I agree, but we better we better make sure we're doing verse 26 and the first part of 27 if we want God to do this part in red. That is the only way anyone can be added to the church. The Lord adds to its members those he saved. Psalms 127 and 1 said, Except the Lord build the house. They that labor, labor in vain. They labor in vain that build it. Often we put the emphasis that the great revival of Pentecost is our goal to reach. And, and I, I strongly believe that God can give an outpouring of hundreds at times. Okay? But I don't believe that God, it would be like you going, now you, you got a set of twins, but it would be like you going to the hospital and God blessing you with ten kids at one time. In all seriousness, he can't handle them. She can't handle them. They can't support them. God is not going to give a church 500 people if they don't have the tools to take care of them. So what happens is the more we get involved of helping the babies and we get out of the baby bed and out of the nursery, the more babies that God can bring to the church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your, your best leads is the people that you come in contact with on a daily basis. I received a phone call. This individual is supposed to be here in a minute. I received a phone call. I was here in prayer, praying about this message. And as I was praying about this message, Brother Hoyt was here. It was right around 1130. I was walking right through here. My phone rings. It's Robbie, and normally, if I don't recognize the number, I hit ignore. Get a lot of spam calls. It was a local number, though, but Brother Shannon, something said, answer the phone. So, you know, I'm talking about being sensitive, so you know, I guess, I, you know. All right, God. And so I answered the phone. The lady says, is this Pastor Mills? I said, yes, ma'am, it is. She said, what time are your service times? And I told her. She said, okay. She said, well, Pastor, it's may seem kind of weird. But over the last three weeks, I have met three people from your church. And I would go up to them and say, where do you go to church at? And they would tell me. After the first time, okay. After the second time, I'm like, Okay, something is going on here. Sister Terry, you were number two. I think it may have started with Sister Megan. And um, she said, um, and on the third time, I'm like, God, I think you're trying to tell me I need to go to the, visit that church. Now, this lady lives all the way over around Segan area. 
St. George. She said, I said, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe God's drawing you to this place. She said, I know he's drawing me to this place. And she said, I'm coming. She said, I tried to text this from Megan. I ain't been able to get a hold of her. She said, or Megan, she said, but she'll see me when I get there because I'm on my way. I'm, I'm just telling you about the, I believe it was God confirming to me about the importance of being sensitive to soul winning. This past Friday, I'll be honest with you, I rarely ever go to my shop unless I'm going to fix me a tea. Okay? And half the time I'm telling Sister Courtney what I want ready and then I'll get there and then I'll leave. I come to the church. Friday, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm studying this message, but I was planning on teaching it next Sunday. Okay? And I, and I stopped by the shop at about 9 o'clock. Jackson was working. I stopped by the shop about 9 o'clock and I said, I'll be here about five minutes and then I'm going to go you know, church, whatever, and, you know, pray and study. And I don't know, I, I, I took my MacBook and my laptop in there with me and I sit down in the office and I'm like, I said, well, I'll just sit here and get on the computer for a little bit while I'm eating. And, and so I said, um, but I didn't get on, I just started studying for this message. I'd been there about 30 minutes or so and I heard a lady come in the door and she made mention about, uh, our grandchildren's picture on the wall. She said, man, they're really growing up, blah, blah, blah. And then she asked Jackson, she said, you're Jackson, right? He's like, yes, ma'am. And something said, you need to go out there. So I walk out there, and uh, it was April Smith. Many of y'all remember April Smith. Her husband Rob has passed away now. And April got the Holy Ghost in Brother Frederick's revival. And I walked, I, walked out, I walked out there, and I said, April? I said, when are you coming to see me? And I'm not talking about here at this shop. I'm talking about down the road at that church. And tears rolled up in her eyes. She said, Brother Mills, I've been going with my boyfriend to the Catholic church. And she just shook her head. I said, you ain't going to get what you need there, See, She did get back to that church. She said, I know it. She said, my boyfriend comes to this shop every day. I said, really? I said, who is it? She said, his name is Kevin. I didn't forget his last name. Schilling. Kevin Schilling. And I said, you've got to be kidding. I said, Kevin, just the other day, he, he liked the recap from the Taco Tuesday. And I sent him a private message inviting him to Taco Tuesday, but he never replied. I said, y'all both need to come. And I began to talk to her, and I began to witness to her. And she made a commitment that they both don't try to come. And I'll go back, and I sit down, and I looked at the title of this message, The Importance of Being Sensitive Soul Winning. I said, well, I'm getting ready to go. And the Lord said, no, you need to stay right here. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. 30 minutes later or less, Kevin comes walking in the door. I said, man, I just got done talking about you, Kevin. He said, I hope it was good. I said, it'll be good if you do what I want you to do. He said, what's that? I said, I need you to come to church. He smiled. I said, I didn't realize that you in April, uh, you know, that was your girlfriend and everything. And he said, Yes, sir. I said, I was talking to her about church. He said, she told me that she used to come to church there. And I began to talk to him. And then he said, because he carefully, he said, when y'all have them Taco Tuesdays, can you tell me where, where you have them at? And I began, he said, I was coming to the last one. I had to work over. Can you give me a heads up and let me know before the next one? I said, you better believe it. I said, man. And before, so he made a commitment to that. I, I got ready to leave. Something said, no, I need to stay. And Phyllis is it Horn? Yeah, Phyllis Horn, one of our customers. See, Phyllis came during the prayer gathering that we had, the community prayer gathering, and she stood either right here or right here for over two hours, two and a half hours, and prayed. I'm talking about a Catholic girl, woman, prayed that whole time. And I'd sit, I sent every now and then, I sent her a, a Facebook private message inviting her to come to church. She'll never reply. And I walked out there, and she was out there. And I said, I ain't going to say nothing about church. I'm just going to see how this thing works. And I'm just standing by the counter. She looked at me. She said, I got your message the other day when you invited me to church. I said, you did? She said, yeah. She said, I was out of town, but I'm going to come. I said, you've never been to a church service, have you? You've only been to prayer. She said, yeah. I said, oh, you got to come to a church service. And I began to talk to her. 
and, and, uh, and, and things, before I know it, it was almost 2 o'clock before I left that place, and people were just coming in one after another. I, I got up yesterday morning, and I swung by the shop, and I got there at 9 o'clock when they opened, and something said, just, I started to tell Jackson, just have me one ready and run it out. Something said, you need to go in. And, and uh, she said, Patsy, Joe's up, come walking in, your grandson. And he come in, and I got to start talking to him about the church. And I stood there at that counter, and he began to talk for probably 15 or 20 minutes. I'm telling you, it's important to be sensitive when God is moving. I told my father, Sister Courtney, hallelujah, if I start showing up, it ain't because you ain't doing a good job. But I said, there's administrative things that I can do, that I can do, that I don't have to be at, I, can, I don't have to, I can do it remotely from wherever. I, I may just have to start spending a day or two back at that shop. I, I'm, I'll help you if you get too busy but my purpose is uh, when they walk through I, I want to be sensitive I, God I want to reach them I, God I want to reach them <laughs> hallelujah the lady that's supposed to be here hallelujah today good she just pulled up she said the thing that impressed me the most about this church she said it was the community bible studies that y'all do where y'all invite anybody that wants to to come. I'm telling you, church, this is our moment. This is our season. This is what we've been praying for. This is what we've been fasting for. I really believe that Tuesday night, Brother Williams being here was ordained by God. He walked so much in the Holy Ghost. I said nothing to this man. This next Sunday, Brother Travis Houston I believe it's going to do the same thing. And the following Sunday, hallelujah, I, I just, uh, I just uh, felt led in prayer last night. Bishop Willie Hollins is going to be with us on the 3 o'clock service. And I tried to schedule him two times in the past. And he had a funeral. We had to cancel on. I had a funeral here at the church. We had to cancel on and all that. And wasn't able to do it. But I, I'm just telling you right now, I believe the time is right. I said, I believe the time is right. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We appreciate you very much. We actually supposed to have some other visitors. We miss Cody and, and, uh, and Kim today. I believe they had a funeral that they had to go to. He contacted me about this. I liked it. I, they live over Cody Jarro and them. They, they, you know, his family's been coming with him. They've been filling that back seat. I recommend it. See, I, I try to be kingdom minded. They live all the way at Prairieville now. And I told them, why don't y'all go to Brother, or they, you know, Brother Halford's church. You know, it'd be close for you and all that. They said, well, we're going to start there next Sunday. So I, I even contacted Brother Halford, let him know. Next, last Sunday, they showed up back here again. I said, I thought y'all was going over there. They said, Mom and Dad said, we just like it too much over there. We want to, I said, keep on coming. Keep on coming. Huh? Sister Courtney and Brother Sidney's working on Bible studies with them. Huh? I'm telling you right now, this is our moment. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much. We're going to dismiss you. Let's have a great pre-service prayer and look forward to what God's going to do.